Dolphins fans, I want to hear from you. What year did you become a Dolphins fan? Go down in the comments section and let me know. Happy Sunday to you all. Hope you're all having a fantastic weekend. And I think your weekend just got a little bit better because the Dolphins mailbag is back after a two-week hiatus. I'm excited to get to engage with y'all again, our very loyal subscribers here on Dolphins today. And after the draft, there's a lot of news and rumors surrounding the Miami Dolphins. So here we go with this edition of the Dolphins mailbag, and we start with my guy Bill Gilmore. Bill says, I'm hearing we're having Connor Williams take snaps at center. How realistic would that be to carry over into the regular season? And if not, how realistic is J.C. Treader to Miami? Bill, let's take a look at what the Dolphins' offensive line depth chart would look like with Connor Williams. That is just a big yikes. That I just, I'm just not a fan of of what I'm looking at right now. In fact, I think the current depth chart with Michael Dieter would probably be better than this because when you look at a player like Connor Williams, he's fantastic as a guard. But the Cowboys tried him at the center spot last preseason, and it was a disaster. That coming from Tom Downey, who hosts the Cowboys report here at Chat Sports. It did not go well, and they obviously moved him back to being exclusively a guard. It's just a bad idea, and I don't even think bad is, is, is the right word. I think it's a disastrous idea to do this. Look, Connor Williams is one of the best guards in the National Football League. Last season ranked 11th on PFF amongst all guards. You gave him a two-year contract to play guard. Do not put him at center because if you do that, then you're going to have to put Liam Eikenberg or Austin Jackson back at the guard spot who have not performed well at left guard. So let me ask you, because I think this is going to be somewhat, you know, we're going to be in agreement here. Do you want Connor Williams at center? Type Y for yes, type in for no. It's the pinned comment on today's video. So when you're here with an ad break, go down and let me know what you think. No, there's just no excuse at this point not to sign J.C. Treader. Chris Greer, listen to me. Sign J.C. Treader. You are actually trying Connor Williams at center? Really? That tells me one of two things. One, you do not believe in Michael Dieter to play that position. Two, you're stubborn. Just go sign J.C. Treader. He's one of the best remaining NFL free agents. By far the best center still left out there. He has a ton of experience. He's durable. I know that rumors surrounding J.C. are, oh, he has bad knees. He hasn't missed a game in like the past five years. Sign J.C. Treader. There's no excuse not to do it. Is Winter Skull 69, one of our most loyal subs says here. Sign J.C. Treader. Please and thank you. Chris Greer, please sign J.C. Treader because if you do, it would make the Dolphins' offensive line one of the best units in the NFL. You could go from having the worst offensive line last season to one of the best this season. You're J.C. Treader away from accomplishing that. So if you want J.C. in Miami, I want you to go down in the chat Type JC in the chat. The other day, y'all did a great job spamming JC in the chat. Let me see it again. Hashtag JC to Miami. Kevin, what's going on, man? Appreciate the question. Who should start at right tackle to protect Tua's, Tua's blind side? Austin Jackson or Liam Eikenberg? And that's a great question, and we'll stick here with the offensive line. I think Austin Jackson is the better option. I think he has more potential then Liam Eikenberg to play that position and played at a high level. And when you look at Austin Jackson, yes, he was the guard last season for the Dolphins, but he was the left tackle in 2020 after being a first-round pick out of USC. And he was a very good left tackle at USC. And keep in mind, he was protecting their quarterback's blind side at USC. At the right tackle position, he would be protecting Tua Tonga by Loa's blind side. So looking at my projected offensive line depth chart it does have right now Austin Jackson at that spot and Barry Jackson of the Miami Herald has reported a couple times that that is the plan to start AJ at right tackle 
But keep an eye on Kellen Deesh. And I know that sounds crazy to say, you know, him potentially being the starting right tackle, but it's crazy he went undrafted. It, this is not your typical undrafted free agent. Kellen Deesh is one heck of a football player that had a fantastic season at Arizona State, was a top 10 tackle in this draft, somehow went undrafted, is Tom Downey's number one undrafted free agent, and Tom Downey ranks all the draft prospects like 1 to 300, and he says this guy is the best undrafted player. The Dolphins got him. They gave him a lot of money guaranteed, more than most undrafted free agents get. So he's a lock to make the team. I don't think he's like, look, don't get me wrong. He's not going to start week one. Like, that'd be crazy. However, if Austin Jackson doesn't perform well at right tackle, you know who they're going to put there? Liam Eikenberg. We've seen what he can do at tackle. It's not great. If he doesn't play well, Kellen Deesh, I think, is the next man up, and I think he's someone to keep an eye on this season for the Dolphins. So that being said, let me ask you all this question. Will Kellen Deesh start by the end of the year, by week 17? Do you think he's going to start? If so, type S. If you think he's going to be a backup for the entire 2022 season, type B down in the comments. We know Tyree Kill's going to start, and he's going to be putting up numbers this season for the Miami offense. So if you haven't gotten your Tyree Kill jersey yet, go down to that link, chatsports.com slash Tyreek. You can get this aqua one or my favorite, this little throwback one right here. Sam, I know you're a Broncos fan. Producer Sam Brown, a big Broncos fan. But Sam, you got to be rocking this with me this upcoming season, man. That is a fire jersey, and you can get it at chatsports.com slash Tyreek. Fabio Del Tasso saying, what's the case with Ruben Foster? I'm very happy you asked me this question, Fabio. And what other linebackers could join the Dolphins? I think we need another good veteran linebacker to be elite. And let's talk about Ruben Foster again. We haven't talked about him in a few weeks. They, he, uh, he met with the Dolphins on April 8th. Now, here's the thing with Ruben Foster. He hasn't played in an NFL game in almost four years. He was waived by the 49ers after a domestic violence charge in 2018, was picked up by the Washington, uh, at the time, Redskins, and tore his ACL and LCL in 2019. So he hasn't played. That being said, I don't think Miami's going to sign him, and I don't think they're going to sign a linebacker. They met with him almost a month ago. If they were going to sign Reuben Foster, they would have signed him back then or before the draft. Unfortunately for Reuben Foster, I don't know if he's going to have another chance. I kind of thought Miami was his last chance in the league. I hope he gets picked up again. I'm all for giving him a second chance. Obviously, you have the off-the-field concerns in addition to the injury concerns with Reuben Foster. But there's still a couple good, really good linebacker free agents out there, including uh, Kyle Van Noy, who obviously played for the Dolphins two seasons ago, and Anthony Barr. But with the Dolphins drafting Channing Tindall, I do not think they're going to sign a linebacker. I think that was their big addition at the linebacker position. You obviously re-signed a couple guys uh, like Duke Riley, but in terms of bringing in an outside presence to bring into that linebacker room, I think that it was Channing Tindall, and he's a heck of a player and is going to make a big impact in his rookie season. Ruthless Productions, what's going on? Asking... Who will have the most touches between the two Dolphins running backs? And he's obviously referencing Chase Edmonds and Raheem Mostert, two of the newest additions of this team. So Miles Gaskin goes from RB1 to RB3, and Chase Edmonds and Raheem Mostert you know, might be splitting touches, but Chase Edmonds should be RB1. That being said, I really like Raheem Mostert. I think he's a great pickup for this Dolphins team. You reunite him with Mike McDaniel, who he played under for a few seasons in San Francisco. So Mostert's really good. That being said, he didn't really play last season. Had the knee injury in week one, missed the entire rest of the season. So we don't really know what his return's going to be like. He's going to be fully healthy for week one, uh, but he hasn't played you know, in a, in a very long time. So Chase Edmonds, much younger. He's 26, Raheem Mostert 30. Chase Edmonds, very dynamic in both the pass-catching aspect of the game and obviously on the ground with the way he can really run through a defense. Chase Edmonds will be RB1 this season for the Dolphins. 
Chris Kyle asking, what's the biggest X factor that the Dolphins will have to overcome to finally make the playoffs this year? I think that's going to happen, Chris, and hopefully get a playoff win. Great question. It comes down to a tongue of Iloa. You've given him an offensive line, minus J.C. Treader. Please sign J.C. Treader. You've given him a much better offensive line. You've given him Tyreek Hill. You've given him Cedric Wilson. You've given him Eric Ezukanma, who you drafted in the fourth round. It all comes down to Tua. Is he going to perform with all that talent around him? If Tua is above average, I'm not saying all pro. I'm not saying MVP. If he's above average, the Dolphins not only will make the playoffs, they might win the division. But if he's below average, the Dolphins might miss the playoffs altogether. So it really comes down to Tua, and I think that he will perform with all the talent around him. Uh, you ask, who do they have? who do they have to overcome? They don't have to overcome the Bills to make the playoffs. Two teams from that division, I think, are going to make the playoffs, but they're better than the Patriots. I already think they've surpassed the Patriots. They beat them in both matchups last season. The Patriots' free agency was underwhelming. Their draft was underwhelming. I mean, my goodness, we were talking about Cole Strange as a potential option for the Dolphins at 102, and the Patriots took him at pick 29 overall. So the Patriots did not have a good draft. They did not have a good free agency. Uh, Devontae Parker, they traded for him. That was the Dolphins' fourth best receiver. It's now the Patriots' best wide receiver. That makes us feel pretty good in Finns Nation. So the Dolphins better than the Patriots. The question is, can they beat the Bills? I think they can. I don't know. It's really tough to tell at this point, but obviously the moves they've made this offseason put them in a position to compete with Buffalo. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at WillScott44. Love hearing from you guys on Twitter, so reach out anytime. This has been Will Scott. Talk to you soon.